Now they describe it as creating the largest protest banner the world's ever known. A group of guerrilla graffiti artists went to Bethlehem during Christmas of 90, uh, 2007, where they painted on the concrete security wall there. The barrier, which Israel's put up around the Palestinian West Bank, it was written on by artists from across the globe, and they wanted to express their solidarity for the Palestinians. Now, a book of photos capturing some of the graffiti has just been published. And joining me now is William Parry, the author of Against the Wall. William, thank you very much. Um, thank you. What were you hoping to achieve? Let's take a look look at one of these images now and uh, tell us a little bit about this. Uh, this piece is by Ron English, an American graffiti artist. Uh, it's about 12 meters wide and probably about 7 meters high. Um, and this is just opposite Aida camp in, uh, in Bethlehem. And Ron English described it as uh, a concept behind pardon our oppression was to link American support to the oppression of the Palestinian people. Since Israel is our welfare state, we have a certain responsible for the Palestinian people that we don't want to seem to acknowledge. What point were you hoping to make with this book and with the graffiti? Uh, it was basically to use the same concept that Banks, Banksy and the other artists uh, had of using artwork as a means of um, directing interest and attention to the wall, uh, to what was happening behind the wall. I think we can have a look at another one, and you just mentioned Banksy there. I think mm. this is one of his works, isn't it? Yeah, this is uh, probably the most famous piece that came out of uh, the Santos Ghettos project. Uh, this is the, the dove with the flag jacket, uh, and you can see around it are bullet holes um, from uh, previous incursions, and over on the, the far right of the screen is an actual incursion going on at the time. Now, I know you wanted to make a point about this wall, but the Israelis would say, of course, they put up this barrier because they were facing a lot of suicide bombings a mm. few years ago, and this is what stopped them happening. Uh, they will say that, but I think if you go and visit the, the uh, West Bank, you'll see um, where it is built, its route is... Uh, used to appropriate a lot of uh, rich Palestinian land and water resources. And I mean, I've seen Palestinians crossing the barrier every day. And obviously these people are there to go find work. They're not there for uh, terrorist activity. Presumably, though, in the same way that you would condemn what the Israelis have done, you would condemn those Palestinian suicide bombers for their acts. And uh, It's always delicate, isn't it, for artists to get involved in this sort of, particularly in the Middle East, this mm -hmm. sort of politics. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and this is one example of where some of the artists uh, inadvertently upset the uh, local population by comparing uh, the Palestinians to donkeys. Uh, this is a term, a derogatory term used in, in uh, Palestine to insult somebody. Uh, this one here is by an Italian street artist named uh, Eric the Dog. And what it shows is two communities on the backs of two donkeys, uh, each one pulling in the opposite direction, but ultimately tied together. It's supposed to be about the stubbornness, presumably, of the negotiators or the two parties in the peace process, Absolutely. or so-called peace process. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and you had Palestinian artists involved in all this as well. You weren't just, presumably, bringing in lots of international artists. That's right. There were a number um, of Palestinian artists involved. Uh, very little of their art is available now. A lot of them were selling the artwork in the uh, Manger Square shop. This piece is taken from a village called Nilin, which is one of uh, several Palestinian villages at the forefront of um, uh, nonviolent protests against the annexation of their land. And what struck me about this and many experiences like this was just how so many of the young children uh, lose their innocence. And uh, from, from day one, uh, it's about losing their, their culture, their land, uh, and, and possibly their future. And it's very much a David and Goliath story. Uh, children here. Uh, being tear gassed against the fourth most powerful army in the world. In the end, look, this is a very long running, intractable, intractable problem, isn't mm. it? The Middle East. It's been there for centuries. It will probably continue to be an issue for many years. Is there a risk that artists look a bit naive when they start getting involved in issues like this? Because after all, they probably can't change anything. Um, I suppose there is that risk, but it is one way of expressing uh, solidarity, of uh, expressing an opinion when our politicians uh, so often fail, as they have done for decades of uh, political wrangling. So it is one creative way of uh, expressing their voice. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. An interesting Thank project. Thank you. Well, that's just